See, to truly please God, you got to embrace and enjoy this thing. Let's talk about it. going on closer to God Ministries. Welcome back to another Righteous Spirit-Filled episode. Today, I hope to help you get closer to the truth, closer to the kingdom, and closer to the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, because he is truly deserving of it, and we worship you on a daily basis. In this culture, in this society that we live in, we have a lot of people that don't embrace and enjoy how God created them. This is the reason why we have all of these different kind of truths. You got men out here saying, well, I can do this and it should be acceptable. You got women out here saying, I can do this and that and it should be acceptable. But in the end, all of us must take an account for what we have done on this earth, our actions. And if they weren't pleasing to God, if they did not meet the will of God, you better be prepared to stand there shamefaced as you're not you're not getting granted a ticket, getting access to the kingdom. See, when you fall in line with real truth, all other truth goes out the window. When you have a relationship with God and you have strayed away from religion, I know religion, but I also have elevated to the point where religion don't mean nothing to me because I know God wants my relationship. You know, on a daily basis, God doesn't want me just going through life religiously. He wants me talking to him consistently. He wants me applying his word, his will to my life consistently. But you got to embrace how God created you. You got to enjoy how God created you. When you think about how God created you as a man and as a woman, he's already outlined this in scripture. I don't need to touch it. I don't need to touch it. I don't need to try to reinvent it, recreate it, because it ain't going to never be no better than how he created it. When you embrace and enjoy and fulfill your purpose, woo, woo, this is pleasing to God. Just because I can put on a wig, I can do all this and do all that and slap my hair and move all around like this. You really think that's pleasing to God? No, no. You got all these women out here trying to be men. Is it pleasing to God? No, no, no. And let me say this. A lot of people, when they hear me, when they hear me come from real truth, they, they don't assume that I'm perfect because none of us are free from sin. But everybody is not stepping up to be a teacher because they face a harsher judgment, a more scrutinized judgment. This is why, you know, I'm willing to take for it because in the end, on my record, on my account for what I've been able to do for the kingdom, it's going to say either you taught them correctly or you made some mistakes, moved according to the Holy Spirit and got it right before you came home. I'm raising my hand for that, stepping up and stepping out so we can get this thing right. But you truly have to embrace your manhood, how God created you, your womanhood, how God created you. But if you steady, if you steady got on, if you steady got your feet in the shoes created for man and you're looking at the woman's shoes thinking i want to try those on this ain't pleasing to god this ain't pleasing to god i tell you when it comes to being a husband when it comes to being a man when it comes to being a father i embrace and i enjoy it i embrace and i enjoy it because whether you believe it or not whether or not you believe in real truth the only truth that there is the scripture the gospel you can try to do what you were not created to do but chances are it ain't gonna work out for you you know what I'm saying? It ain't no more pleasing action that you can do than to do what God has already instructed you to do. See, there's levels to this. There's See, there's religion where most religious people never know God and really have a true reverence and fear for him. Then there's relationship with God where he's moving in your life and he's using you in your life. And then there is the, the application of making sure that I'm uplifting and bringing up the kingdom, raising my hand and say, hey, somebody's doing it. The pastor down there at the church, 70 years old. The pastor over at this church in his 50s. Over here at this church, 80 years old. One day they're going to die off. We got to bring this thing up from the back. 
We got to bring it up from the young generation. But if the young generation ain't nobody volunteers for nothing, then what do you think we going to get out of that? We going to talk about what has and what has been. See, I'm here to tell you about what it's going to be, what it's going to be, what it's supposed to be moving forward. Because once all the old elders, all the old saints, they die, they get too weak where they can't stand up and do it. We just supposed to sit there and look at each other. This is the next level. This is the next level. We live in a society where everybody wants you to assume that they're working. I'm hardworking. You ask the average person, say, hey, are you hardworking? Yes, I am. But when you when you sit down on it and you say, hey, what have you been doing for the last three years of COVID? Well, I've just been collecting a paycheck from the government. You ain't hardworking. You're sitting on your hind part. We got this truth to where we want to be perceived a certain way, but we don't want to show application. We're too lazy, too lazy physically. When you're lazy physically, chances are you're probably lazy spiritually. That's why I said you're never going to be a father or a mother that's pleasing to God if you don't embrace righteous parenthood, righteous fathering, righteous mothering. If you're thinking you're doing something pleasing to God as a father or as a mother or as a man or woman, but yet you have injected or inserted your own truth into the equation and said, well, this is how I'm going to do it. And I assume it's going to work out. Don't be surprised when it works out and your kids are just as jacked up as you. Don't assume that you did everything right because it's time to put your feet to the fire and say, what did I get wrong? How can, how can I do actions on a daily basis that's pleasing to you? You got to truly embrace and enjoy this thing. You see what I'm saying? I take true, I embrace fatherhood, being a husband, being a man, because as the head of household, as the leader going out and being able to do this stuff, if somebody messes up in my household and publicly I am asked or questioned about what happened, it's my fault. It's my fault. What happened in that house happened under my authority. Nobody else gets the blame publicly, but you got to embrace that as a man. You got to know real leadership. And then from there, when you know real leadership, you handle it in the household. You retrain or do what you need to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And it possibly could, but you don't get to publicly as a man blame somebody else, then persecute them. You got to embrace and enjoy this thing. And I see people out here that's raising their hand saying, I'm a hard worker, but they ain't putting in no work. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting a gun barrel straight. Bye.